It seems like more and more automakers, both mainstream and luxury brands, are starting to really push towards electrification and EVs. And it seems like more and more of these brands are unfortunately just slapping things together and calling them EVs just for the sake of selling them. And unfortunately, this seems to be an example of one of them. Today, I'm really going to try not to inherently be mean, but I will convey my feelings about this car, and we will take a deep dive at the all-new, first-ever electric Lexus, the RZ450e. So this RZ in particular is a 2023 RZ450e luxury all-wheel drive in Lexus's ether color. It's a nice, interesting-looking blue, and it certainly does catch eyes, but it is a $500 option. And in terms of other options, this doesn't have too much, but it does have the optional illuminated front Lexus emblem, which you can see turns on when it's charging. This one also has the optional dynamic sky panoramic moonroof that's similar to the Toyota Venza, so there's no actual shade. Those two and a few other little things bring the MSRP of this RZ450e in particular to $67,090. Also, for anyone wondering, these are not built in the US. These are actually built in Toyota's Aichi Japan plant. Unlike the other crossovers in Lexus's lineup, like the NX, the RX, and the TX, the RZ is only available in two different trim levels. First of all, we have the premium, which starts at about 60K. All of them come with a dual motor setup, panoramic moonroof, and they come pretty much as you see them here. And then we have the luxury trim like my tester, which starts at about $65,000. And although Lexus does offer a $15,000 lease credit, mm, I'd still pass. Now you may be wondering, why am I giving this car such a hard time? And it's not for no reason, because I like Lexus. I love the new RX, I like the new NX. Lexus makes good crossovers, but let me just explain this one. As we know, the RZ is a full EV, and it competes with other electric crossovers in this market. First of all, I was appalled to see that this doesn't have hood struts. This is $70,000 and it doesn't have hood struts? An RX has hood struts. I know this is based off of the BZ4X, but if you're going to be paying that, I don't want to stick to keep my hood up. I'm not going to let myself get too heated because in terms of the power figures that this makes, it's actually pretty decent. All RZs will come standard as all-wheel drive, so you get two AC synchronous electric motors, one in the front and one in the rear. This also uses a 71.4 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack, and that gives this an estimated horsepower rating of about 308. And Toyota doesn't offer an actual torque figure, but if you add the 196 pound-feet of torque from the front axle and the 124 pound-feet of torque from the rear axle, you get an estimated 320 pound-feet of torque. And I would say it feels like that because the power is very linear, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Those power figures get this 4,600 pound piece to 60 miles an hour in an estimated five seconds. That's actually pretty good, and I respect how quick it is. What I have a problem with is the range. Lexus claims 196 miles of driving on a full charge with this. Realistically, depending on weather conditions, how you drive, traffic conditions, literally every variable, I think you'd get at most 170 miles. At most 170 miles. I haven't seen that at all in my week of driving this. The most mileage I've seen, and this I've let it charge for two days with the level one charger, the most I've seen is about 150. Right now, in fact, it's sitting at over three quarters of a charge, and it says I only have about 110 miles of driving left. I know that's fine for someone that doesn't really commute far or goes to the grocery store, but for anyone that's trying to do any sort of long distance drive, like an hour drive, it doesn't seem 
possible with this car. In addition to the low amount of range and me getting annoyed at how this has a uh, hood prop, charging is okay. If you use the included level one charger that this car comes with, Lexus claims about 50 hours to charge this. That's over two days to have this thing plugged in to get a full charge. But I hope if you own or lease one of these, you won't have to use that level one charger. That's 110 volts. If you use level two charging, also known as 240 volts, so that's a dryer outlet or an actual charger if you go somewhere, that's about 10 hours to fully charge this thing. That's also miserably slow. The only way to make this thing charge quickly, which first of all, I saw this in another video, the way how this opens, and it didn't bother me until I lived with this car in person. It's not supposed to move this much. Thankfully, this car does accept DC fast charging, so you can charge it quickly if you can find a level three charger, but that can charge this from 10 to 80% in about an hour. In my eyes, I think Lexus should have made an electric RX. The RX has been the best-selling luxury crossover for pretty much two decades, and they could have continued the success of that by making an electric version. I know everyone would want an electric RX, but we have this. It's about three inches shorter than the RX at 189 inches long and an inch narrower at 74 inches long. So it's a little bit smaller than an RX, but a little bit bigger than an NX. But I would still rather have an NX or an RX. As you can see, this one, because it's a loaded luxury model, has these optional 20 inch alloy wheels. The option is the darker finish, but the luxury trim will just standard get 20s, while the lower premium trim will get an 18 inch alloy wheel. This is my least favorite angle of the RZ. It's one of those crossovers that has the coupe-like shape, but also very flat at the back. I know this market of car has a buyer, but uh, it's not quite me. Of course, as you would expect, this has a hands-free tailgate which does work pretty well. And thankfully, it opens up pretty quickly, but it reveals 23.7 cubic feet of volume behind this second row seat up. Thankfully, step out while well, lift over height isn't too bad either compared to some other EVs, but if you want more space, you can drop the 60-40 split seat down and get 55.7 cubic feet of volume. Lexus also does not advise you to tow with an RZ450e, I, I mean, you could put a bike rack type hitch on it, but that's all I'd do. Now, things may be pretty frustrating on the outside and under the hood of this thing, but once you get inside, things actually get surprisingly nice. The door closes with a nice solid thunk. It's very quiet in here. Everything is nice, soft touch. The lower part of the door is a harder touch plastic. Most surprisingly, this car is really big for the second row. The driver's seat is in my position. I'm five foot nine and I can fit my feet pretty much under the seat and I have so much legroom, maybe six inches, five inches of legroom. Headroom is pretty decent. It's not extraordinary. And because this is electric, the floor in the center is completely flat as well. So you could fit three people across here. The rear seat itself is actually pretty comfortable as well. But again, the Alcantara, I mean, like, although it is nice, I think maybe they put a little bit too much in here to try to make it feel fancy. They are perforated and both outboard rear seats are heated as well. There's also an armrest in the center with more suede and two mm, kind of small cup holders, but they're not that bad. Behind the center console, there are two air vents, thankfully, but this does not have a third zone for the climate, which kind of surprises me. Like I said, the two outboard rear seats are heated with three stages and both rear passengers have USB type C ports. And if you don't have type C, you can still plug in things with the 120 volt power outlet back here, which is just two prongs, but it's actually pretty accommodating back here. For the price point, I would expect a little bit more, at least like a third zone for the climate, but space is plentiful. And I think it's actually a pretty nice place to be. Now, as we get into the front seat of this, step-in height is pretty good because this car isn't that tall. 
The driver's door closes with a solid thunk as well, as you would expect. And again, it's nice up front here. It reminds me of other current Lexuses, of course, because it just has that big screen. Because this car is electric, of course, it has push button start. And this is Lexus's current key fob in their lineup. You can see this on a few other Lexus models. It feels nice. I like this new key fob, but because this has smart key access system, you can just keep the key anywhere inside the car, put your foot on the brake and press the power button to go. But like I said, things are actually pretty nice up front here. I was pleasantly surprised to get in this and see all the soft touch materials. I know, as I would expect, this is a Lexus, you know, but this car has disappointed me in other ways, so I wasn't exactly sure how I'd be in this car, but I was pleasantly surprised. The door panel up front is soft touch up here, more of that suede or Alcantara. The lower part of the door panel has stitching with nice white soft touch material on it, and also everything on the dash feels pretty decent, although I will say it's gone away though, but for a few days this car had quite an annoying rattle somewhere in the middle here, but it went away on its own. As we look at the steering wheel, this uses Lexus's current three-spoke leather wrapped wheel. I love how these new Lexus wheels feel. The leather is so soft. There's buttons on the wheel as well. The left side, those buttons control various commands actually. All of these buttons control audio and Bluetooth controls, so I love how simple that is. And on the right side, all of those buttons control what's going on in the gauges and also the various cruise control functions. This does have paddles behind the wheel, but they don't control shifting like you may think. These actually control the regen braking. The left paddle increases regen and the right paddle decreases regen and makes it easier to coast with this thing. Also, you can see this one has that driver attention monitor. I'm not that crazy about it because even sometimes when I'm driving like this, it'll tell me to sit up Something nice though that Lexus does with their cars is put good horns on them. A good sounding horn. As you can see behind the steering wheel as well, the headlights are automatic and also the wipers are automatic as well. The gauges are unfortunately another place of disappointment in this car. There's so much real estate where they could have fit in a full digital display in this car. I do like that Lexus made the gauges a little bit more simple and easier to adapt from a gas car to an EV like this because the battery range or the battery level indicator looks just like a fuel gauge, so I like that. But at least the screen is legible and easy to read, but it just leaves a little bit to be desired, especially considering what's out there now. As we look at the center display, of course, this uses Lexus's current 14-inch display that's found in the RX, the TX, the GX, the LX, pretty much everything that they make now, and it uses the Lexus connected services system. So no more Entune system and it works pretty well. It's very snappy, responsive. It doesn't inherently bother me. I just wish that it had a home screen if you're not in CarPlay. Thankfully, everything is pretty easy to find in here. There's no embedded menus like some other luxury brands. So it is pretty easy to get around here. You also have wired and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I mostly use Apple CarPlay anyway. So it's still very easy, very intuitive. The screen is very responsive. The Mark Levinson system in this luxury model sounds pretty good as well. Strong audio. I'm not... Uh, the best at describing how good audio is, but this is pretty good. Down below, but also still in the screen, is the dual zone automatic climate control. Thankfully, the climate controls will always be in the same spot. Thankfully, there's also a physical volume knob as well, but again, that just reminds me, this screen is entirely touchscreen. This doesn't use any trackpad that Lexus used to use. It works so much better than the older systems. Down below, you can see the button for the parking assistant. So this can actually park itself. It can pull in, back in, and also parallel park. And it does it pretty well. This also has a 360 view camera that works when you put the car into reverse or drive. But you could see it also has that augmented reality type feature as well. But when you put the car into reverse, first of all, 
it beeps like that but also you can see the 360 view camera and the quality is great you can see everything at night there's multiple views many guidance lines when you put the car into drive you can see the front camera which is also clear and everything it just makes it very easy to park all the cameras in here and also how nice the camera quality is in here there's also three usb type c ports on the right of those two buttons Two of them only charge and one seems to only do data. There's also a wireless charger underneath that and it works, but it's loud and it's annoyingly loud because of course, because this is an EV, you can kind of hear everything. And that's one of the things I hear the most when it works and then stops working, works and then stops working. Because of this electronic shifter deal, there is a bit of space underneath as well that's big enough to fit the owner's manual but it doesn't want to come out but on top of that there's two reasonably sized cup holders in the center of the car this also has bottle holders on each door and also if we look at the center armrest it's pretty soft and it has decent stitching on it as well it opens in both ways for both the driver and passenger and space in the middle is actually pretty accommodating as well but i was very disappointed to see that this car does not have a glove box so this is really the only storage that you really have in this car because there's no glove box there's airbags of course uh, face and knee airbag and there's space underneath here but this is the only storage that you're going to get now the front seats in this are also very comfortable and very soft it's been very pleasant to be in here and I don't want to completely knock on this car because it is nice to be in and it's nice to drive and thankfully the seats are comfortable of course this isn't a sporty car but the seats offer plenty of support for my back my shoulders and also my thighs both the driver and passenger seats offer eight ways of power adjustments but only the driver's seat offers two-way adjustable lumbar both the driver and passenger side seats are heated and cooled but you will not find massage on an RZ450E. Also, the steering wheel is power tilt and telescoping. You also have three person memory for the steering wheel, the driver's seat, and also the mirrors. Speaking of the mirrors, I was surprised to see that this car doesn't have a digital option for the rear view mirror, but there is three person garage home link. Thankfully, even though it doesn't have that digital rear view mirror, it is pretty easy to look at the back. There's a sunglass holder, which I wouldn't have found, honestly. And you can see this has the dynamic panoramic moonroof that is an option, I think, for $550. It's an option that I honestly don't care for because it actually uses battery. Because when you put this car into range mode, it turns this back off. But overall, the interior of the RZ450E is surprisingly nice inside, and it is comforting, although this car does induce anxiety. And now we can talk about that. So this car has really made me feel all types of ways, and I will explain. It's actually pleasant to drive. That was my first impression when I got this almost a week ago. And mind you, this is not my car, <laughs> but we will be seeing the power now. So I'll put myself into sport mode and So 308 horsepower and an estimated, at least in my estimate, 320 pound-feet of torque. It's actually pretty decent in terms of acceleration. Let's see how it handles. This is not a handler, but... I mean, it offers plenty of acceleration. I have not been like, this car is too slow at all. It's offered plenty of acceleration and it's smooth power as well. And of course it's quiet, but it's interesting. A lot of these EVs now, they're making them have these uh, simulated sounds, which sounds a little bit weird. It's like they make it try to sound like a four cylinder. Interesting, you know? See driver inattention detected. 
I mean, it gets up to speed wonderfully, and it seems like it only makes this noise in sport mode because I'm going to put myself into normal. No, it still makes that noise in normal mode as well. So, I mean, it's fine. It's totally fine. It drives, I mean, it drives really nice. It feels like I'm driving an RX, just electric. So they got the driving experience down, but it's like everything else, just how far you can drive it, that's the problem. And I would want to drive this more because it's actually nice. The steering offers plenty of weight. The whole car while you're driving it offers a heavy feeling to it. It doesn't feel heavy like it's slow, but it just feels like you're driving a solid piece of machinery. There is quite a bit of wind noise, but that's only because it's pretty windy today, but otherwise it's actually barely noticeable, especially on the highway. The regen braking works pretty well, but this does not offer a true one pedal driving experience. But this car really does drive well. It will shock you how it drives and you may want one after you drive it, but I really advise you to not. It is not advisable to buy an RZ450E because of the range. I have right now at this current moment exactly three quarters of a charge and I have 114 miles left. I'm not using heated seats. I'm not using the heated steering wheel. I just have the climate on low, the first setting, and it still offers pretty much no mileage at all from a stop it's quick I mean you know all EVs are quick from a stop especially with this amount of power but it's nothing crazy if you're coming from an NX or RX even the normal gas models you'll be pleasantly surprised by the power of this car and it accelerates and it gets out of its way plenty fine honestly the first thing that went through my head when I drove this was for an EV it feels really nice because a lot of EVs, they feel nice, but there's a different feeling. They feel lighter. They don't feel as dense and durable as some other cars, but I really like how Lexus made this feel like an, R is, an RX. Realistically, there isn't that much to write home about when it comes to the driving experience of this car. It's not bad at all. It's actually very nice, but it's pretty smooth. It does everything that I'd want it to do except go far. That's the only problem that really makes this car not really that worth it to me. Now to wrap things up, I'm honestly disappointed to say that I cannot recommend the RZ450E. Under 200 miles of a best case scenario, like, you know, tank of charge, that's unacceptable for this price point. I genuinely think there are better options. I would rather get an RX plug-in or an NX plug-in because those are both far superior cars to this. And I'm not just being mean to be mean. I have to be honest because I mean, <laughs> this is my job to tell you the truth about how I feel about cars. But I don't know. I hope you all enjoyed this video of the RZ450E. Let me know what you think about my opinion and also what you think about this car in the comments below. I'm really disappointed to be disappointed in a Lexus, but they could have done better. I really think that they dropped the ball and fumbled. At least maybe this shows that they have intentions for an electrified future, but hopefully in a better package with a better result, but enough of me rambling. Thank you for listening to me rant about this car for 20, 20 some minutes. I really appreciate all of you watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye peeps.